Today I want Today I want to talk about learning how to code and the expected Today I want to talk about learning how to code and the expectations and realities of learning how to code when you're by yourself or attending a coding bootcamp school. Let me just first say that, you know, if you do decide to partake in this journey, the intention of changing your career, I'm really happy for you and I'm really glad that you're making that effort to take that career path and take that leap to change your lives and it is a really really big ordeal to change from one industry to another but unfortunately i see a lot of stories where a bunch of my friends let me know that they want to learn how to code and when i follow up with them something happens personal situation happens you know i have to um, attend to some family matters and i understand that throughout your life wrenches are going to be thrown your way to block your career goals. But at the same time, I find a lot of situations where you hear about these stories of people wanting to learn how to code, but they just cannot get to that finish point. And whatever that may be, whether it's I learned how to code, but I don't know how to get to that next level of finding a job, or I just haven't really understood what the best curriculum is. It really got me thinking about what is it that really prevents people from getting to that next step? Like why can't you go from I'm going to learn how to code to I'm going to be a software engineer? Whether it be through a coding bootcamp school or a online tutorial using Udemy, Treehouse, I can name them all. It's not a golden ticket. Like there's no guarantee of learning how to code is going to translate into getting a job. And I think that's the biggest misconception that a lot of people run into. And getting a job is another realm of its own. And you, of course, you have to know your fundamentals and know your JavaScript and things like that. But you also have to think about the other aspect of it. How do I make sure that I'm in a position to get a job? What do I need to get a job? How many portfolio websites do I need to get a job? You have to really, really focus on both aspects. And sometimes I see the problem where you're focusing so much on the code and you build no projects with it. Like you say that I know how to use a map function. I know how to use each function. I'm like, great. What did you do with that? Show me what you built. But then they don't really have anything built out. And anything that they do build out is generally coming from the tutorials themselves. And as great as tutorials are, I do have to say that, you know, tutorials are meant for you to have a good understanding, but in reality, the instructors themselves, they are running into debugging issues and things like that. They're just not showing it to you to make your lives a little bit easier when following along. A lot of times as a software engineer, you're gonna be debugging, you're going to go through a bunch of headaches, a couple of hours. Even last week I spent maybe even eight hours, 16 hours, just trying to understand a library and their authentication flow. And, you know, I really didn't get to accomplish too much. But at the same time, even though I spent all those hours doing it, it was definitely worth it because the next time I do it around, I'm very familiar with the library. I know how to use it. And if someone asks me for help, I can get, give them that same feedback. I really see a lot of benefit with the online route in a sense that you don't really have to quit your job. But at the same time, I want you to rewind a little bit. Think about if I take this course, what do I want to do after? Like, don't just finish it out and see what happens. You have to know, like, after I finish this course, I'm going to take this other course. And after I finish these two courses, I'm going to build my own portfolio website, knowing what I learned. Hopefully those two or three classes that you take has given you enough guidance. It's not like you're copying the code from one place to another, but if anything, you're using those videos as a guidance to build your own portfolio website. So imagine that you're learning authentication using Rails and Devise. Yes, you learned it then and you built one of their like tutorial projects, but when you actually build your own portfolio website and you want to create like a blog platform only for yourself, you obviously want to be authenticated, right? So in that case, use what you learn to build something that you want to build. And that will be your portfolio website that you could show to your future employers.
The big problem that I see with a lot of people starting off is they think that they need to buy a bunch of classes from like Udemy, uh, Treehouse membership, and then also like Pluralsight, Udacity. Porting a bunch of classes without taking them provides zero benefits. I know some people that started a Udemy class and halfway through they're like, okay, I, I think I'm ready to move on to a second class. Stop, stop, stop. Just finish out that regular class of whatever you decide to buy and then move on to the next. I, I really think that this generation, we're built in a way where we really want a quick ROI. And sometimes we aren't patient enough to really finish out a curriculum. And even I fall under this category. I told myself that I was gonna learn React Native and I was taking a course just to get myself sped up. But at the same time, I found myself um, just kind of giving up halfway. And I was thinking about why I gave up halfway and it's because for me, I made that conscious decision of, I'm not really gonna be using React Native anytime soon. So learning React Native for me at this moment, for just for the sake of learning, is not going to be beneficial for me long-term. So how does that relate to someone that's trying to learn how to code? I would say that focus on two to three classes. It really doesn't matter what platform you choose, but there are a lot of YouTube influencers that are very knowledgeable about this industry. And one of them actually is Real Tough Candy, which I just recently discovered. And she goes through a very, very comprehensive list of coding boot camps, online platforms, Udemy, and it really is a good way to just really dissect and just get some invaluable knowledge from people that are familiar with the industry to know which classes to take. Whenever friends ask me, I definitely just point them to a Udemy class because number one, it's the most affordable. And number two, if you're just trying to get your feet wet, then it's a great way to start. But let me switch that around and, and say that if you don't want to get your feet wet and you know that this is your career, before you start your courses, what I do want to say is timeline out your schedule. If you're working full time, 40 hours a week, don't expect to be a software engineer in a month. That's just the reality, unless you are just going to be working from nine to five and then studying from six to like 2 a.m. and then just repeating that cycle over and over again. I can pretty much guarantee you that even with that, you're gonna probably number one, burn out and probably won't be able to even have the energy to build out a portfolio site, spend those hours trying to debug because you're gonna be like, wow, this is such a waste of time that of me debugging, but debugging is part of a developer's life. Generally, what I would recommend is set realistic expectations. If you want to find a job, do your research. Figure out what it takes to be a junior software engineer. What do prospective employers look at when they're looking at someone's LinkedIn or portfolio or resume? Especially as someone that is so new and doesn't have any job experience, you're gonna have to kind of finagle your way into getting noticed. If my recommendation, I would only focus on maybe two classes at most, whether it be through Udemy or some treehouse route. I'm not gonna give you any recommendations in this video, but do your research and once you pay for your classes, stick with it and focus on trying to be better in those categories. So if you do a JavaScript course on both front end and back end, try to be the best JavaScript engineer that you can be within the time frame that you're given. After that, I would build maybe two websites at most that really convey your coding skills. Try to make it as nice as possible. If you can, include like a front end framework, a back end framework, and even some kind of authentication to show that you're able to do some kind of full stack work at a very junior level. When employers are looking for someone to hire, they want to be able to find someone that can provide value, but at the same time, if they know that you are a junior software engineer, maybe they also will have some kind of understanding like this person seems very motivated and he or she knows how to do the works at a very basic level. Is this someone that we could train? Maybe not pay as much in the beginning, but that is the kind of handshake that you're gonna have to make with your future employer about like negotiations and salaries and things like that. We're just trying to get your foot in the door first. And once you do that, you can really start evolving and become a better software engineer. The reason for this video is, is that it sucks to see people not make it to that finish line. I don't think it's necessarily a lack of motivation. I think it's more related to lack of planning. And especially as a new developer, when you're not 
familiar with what you're learning? How can you build your own self curriculum? Do your research and try to figure out what do I need to do to get to that next level? And learning how to code is great, but also doing that research to figure out what you can do to become a junior software engineer is just as important. That part where you have to get a job is gonna be so much easier at the end once you've done your initial research. There are forums like Free Code Camp and there are Discord channels from YouTube influencers that will have a lot of community members that provide you invaluable feedback. So it is really, really nice to get involved. Once this whole social distancing gets cleared up, you could also attend a lot of meetups and maybe you'll even be able to find a mentor that way. I also wanna emphasize that you need to exercise patience. A lot of times I feel like people aren't patient enough. They just want it now, now, now. They, if anything, they wanted it yesterday or two days ago. Like I want it to be a full stack JavaScript developer that also knows Java and um, Android development. Like it's a very typical like job posting, right? But you have to be patient. Becoming a software engineer is not easy and there's really no golden ticket for you to just suddenly become a software engineer. You have to grind, but I suggest if you're gonna work hard, you know, you might as well work a little smart as well. As someone that started learning how to code as a second career, I understand that it is very, very hard and whatever route you do take of learning how to code, whether it's bootcamp school or online route, or maybe there's like a weekly meetup that you can do, just understand that it does take time. And I wanna encourage you to be open about your progress. Find people that are willing to be accountable for you to make sure that you are on track of doing what you wanna do. Ask questions. Sometimes you might not know what the best curriculum or path for you is, so if you do know people that are in the industry, grab them for a cup of coffee or message them on LinkedIn or Twitter, dive into their brains and ask them, hey, am I doing this right? Is what I'm doing going to help me become a software engineer? And be prepared to hear some honest feedback because if they are telling you the truth and you can't accept it, then there's something obviously missing there that you need to address. But absorb all the knowledge that you can from experienced developers and in this day of internet, there's so many tech influencers out there or Discord channels. I just don't see why you wouldn't want to take those opportunities. I hope that this video was insightful and gave you the motivation to really plan out your work if you want to become a software engineer. If you're watching this and you are trying to be an aspiring developer, I don't want you to fail. I want you to succeed and be the mentors that you can be once you get that experience. But often enough, I see a lot of people struggling but they do know how to code, they know how to do the work, they just haven't thought about the end game. But thinking about the end game is just as valuable as learning how to code. So you have to take into account all aspects of it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.